Liz and Susie. Hey. I gotta, I gotta sing along because I hear someone singing in the background at your house. <laughs> Sorry for the bird song, but uh, it's now the a bird scorcher. isn't gonna isn't gonna tweet. Oh no, it is. I was like, yeah, I thought it, because I called it out, maybe it well, wouldn't do it. It's a heat wave over here, so I was getting real hot, and so I opened the door. But also, just as an update, I told you know how I'm trying to become a crazy bird lady, mm-hmm. and That's I am cool. making some progress with the crows. Oh, yeah. Tell me everything. Mm-hmm. How's it going? Great. I didn't make the vending machine that you suggested, but oh, oh. I did um, you know, start leaving them gifts, and Ooh. I leave them food. And... That's a good gift. Everybody likes food. <laughs> yeah, right. I hope they come back and leave me like, you know, a big bowl of pasta or something. Anyway, they just come over and then I always say hi because you know how crows can remember faces. Oh my gosh, this is great. So I will keep you posted on our progress because I really want to be best friends with a crow. Yeah, and like, do you feel like you can tell who's who? Do you have like, is there one specific (laughs) one? I was thinking that. There is one that always comes and I just want to know, I'm assuming it's a boy, but why? It might be a girl. Oh, you know, do crows they have do any, give like, off a male, very male energy. <laughs> they do. They're dark and menacing. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. For like yeah, like a villain that you don't want to meet in an alley. But yeah. I wish, maybe I'll look that up, like identifiers of whether it's a boy bird or a girl bird. I think you maybe have to check under their bird skirt, and I don't know if under, you can do that. <laughs> under their plumage. Remember when we talked about turtles, and the only way to identify a turtle is to wait till it is uh, uh, aroused? And so there were people whose <laughs> yeah. job it was to stimulate turtles with a dildo. Yes. A vibrator, not a dildo. That would be weird. They're doing the work of the Lord. That I just posted vibrator. on Brain Candy's Twitter this really cool thread about turtles and how turtles, Tell because me. of cartoons and stuff, people think that turtles truly are just like inhabiting their shell like a hermit crab or something. Yeah. But the, it's not. It's not an exoskeleton. It's some other name. Where it's oh. truly part of their body. Oh yeah, and it's so, like attached to them. Yeah, it's attached. It's not like they can like crawl out and be naked turtles. Yeah. And then there was a picture of uh, something I had never heard of called a soft shell oh. turtle. Yeah. Oh my Holy goodness! Holy crap! It looks like someone took a turtle and smashed it and made it flat like a pillow or something. Really? It's I need really to see troubling. This. Yeah. <laughs> It's oh God, so Google this. weird and not Soft okay. Shell. Because in my mind, I think I know what one looks like. It looked like but, splat. Oh, it, oh, it's weird to me. I don't like this. It, yeah. No, no, no. no. That gives me it's unsettling. Nope, nope. That looks weird. That looks like a cross between a snake and a turtle and a bunch of other things. And I, my mind doesn't know where to put it. And I have heebie jeebies. So thanks for that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the th- the thread was interesting, though. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you should not be sorry. That is interesting information for those who have the I don't know, like don't have what I have. Whatever does that. <laughs> I love when you get grossed out. I don't know. It's just like, bleh. but then it's You're... like just fascinating to know about the animals. I mean, I'm telling you, we don't know anything. We don't know anything about anything. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know what a pangolin was until just a minute ago. I don't think I do know that. Yeah, that's the Pangol- one they're bl- in? Pangolin? In the, be- in the beginning of this coronavirus, uh, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they... I don't know if this is still the story they're sticking to, but they were saying that, like, the, they're, I think they're, like, the most smuggled animal. <laughs> the most smuggled animal. Yeah. That I've never heard of. Yeah, I swear it. What is it, though? It, it looks kind of like... An armadillo, <laughs> but with like scales that would look like a lizard. It's really Ew. weird. I'll just show you. Yeah. Are they smuggling it for food purposes? No, I think it's got to be. Um, it also gives me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> um, yeah. It, I don't know why this that weirds me out so much. Like the, the look of them. They just have this look that's kind of like a. Um, I don't know, kind of like a, 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 a beehive on its back. 
Oh, yeah, you don't like those patterns. No. Yeah, where it's like holes. Yeah, and I'm telling you, all the articles, as soon as you Google this, it says, like, more evidence suggests that pangolins may have passed coronavirus from bats to humans. So, Jesus. Yeah. Did you see this? No. Oh, did you send it to me? I, I did. Let me see. Oh, okay, hold on. I was so focused, I didn't yeah. even notice. Yeah. Oh, no. Nope, nope, yeah. nope, 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 mm-hmm. nope. right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know who's smuggling them, I don't know why, but this is this is an animal that I, I didn't even like know existed until a little while ago. So I'm like, gosh, what other animals do I not know about, you know, the existence of? I've, every time I find a new animal, like the sea creature you showed <gasps> me... Oh! That I'm monster? Sorry. Yeah, creature is a good name. Yeah, for it's it. like I wish I didn't know. Yeah, like, I kind of. It's did too. better that way. But then I'm like, it, it just makes my brain, you know. And maybe it may, it might have been those pot brownies that 4:20 night. <laughs> but I was like, and we're people, and like I can look in our, up an article about this, and like I can think, and I have all these thoughts, and like. You know, we're mm-hmm. like the, the, we have some sort of, we feel like we have some sort of control, but then there are like those sea monsters out there. And I'm just oh my like, God. where do I put I'm that? I'm sorry, but the crow is here. I'm taking <gasps> a picture the right crow's now. The crow's here. The crow's here. Do you think that he heard me? May, probably. <laughs> he could just sense he was like vibing with us. Or maybe he heard you like talk about gifts or maybe he's like, uh, excuse me, it's she. <laughs> it's right. That's Mrs. Crow. That's Mrs. Crow to you. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I interrupted. Carry on. No, this is great. I don't even know. I was just, you know, going down rabbit yeah, hole of thought. Yeah, of what like, do you want you to know, talk about? What does it all mean? What does it all mean? That's that's what happens I, these days. On the subject of animals, I did read that rats in cities are really having a tough time. Like the the country rats are fine because they have already found like homes. But the city rats, nobody's out there leaving their food on the ground. So then they have resorted to cannibalism and infanticide, oh! <laughs> which is not funny, but it is. Well, you know what? Maybe population control. Hey, right. Yeah. I see, it. I see this as a positive. Yeah. It's like Darwin. Yeah. You know what? Maybe mm-hmm. this is this is all part of it. We need to like, I don't <laughs> This know, is all our, part of it. I don't know. Fucking A. Rats are taken. I love when you're bitter. This I don't is so know great. what makes it. It's just me, it's when I feel like I don't have. I don't know. I go to. I don't have control. I don't have uh, 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 the answers. I never do. I just make them up. <laughs> Stop being hilarious. <laughs> I know answers about people. I don't know answers about animals. That's fine. Yeah. Who cares? That's whatever. Good. But I it is funny. It is funny that you bring up it. bring up mice and, and rodents. Because yeah. this was in one of those, you know, I went down the wormhole with something that you sent me. I can't even remember what it was. But it led okay. me to an article on backstories for common words that you use all the time. Oh, I love these. Okay. Me too, Susie. I go crazy for this. My grandma once <laughs> bought me a book of like word origin stories. Yeah. And it was written by a guy named Jordan Almond. And I don't know <laughs> if that's his real name or his right. like pen name. But I didn't notice that until I had owned the book. I think somebody else called it out. Might have even been you. That's really funny. Who was like, this is hilarious. Yeah. That- and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even put it together. So that was great. But back to the mice thing. <laughs> so the word muscle. Yeah, uh, like uh, in your body? In your body. Okay. In Latin, if you translate muscle in Latin, you get little mouse. And what it comes from is that it, like, people thought when you would flex your muscles that it looked like little field mice frolicking underneath the skin. What? So that's where the word muscle comes from. That is made up. No, it is. It's right here on this article <laughs> I read. It's very true. Wait. These ones I have are all so good. Do you think they meant like your bicep in particular? Maybe. I think anything, like, you know. Like I, I, you know, the oh, image it brought up for mean. me is like, remember like those Popeye commercials or not commercials, uh, the old cart, old timey cartoons mm-hmm. where somebody would flex and it would be like the, the, the ship would like go up and down on the ocean yeah. because he was flexing or, you know, so I feel like, <laughs> I don't know, that, that image popped up for me, Wow! but that one's fun, right? That's super fun. So how about, um, Ooh, this one's good. The word clue, since we okay. love that game. So Theseus, a figure in ancient Greek mythology, uh, wasn't very good with direction. So he went out to slay this minotaur and he 
like, didn't want to get lost, so he unrolled this yarn as he went to help him guide, like, to guide him through this maze and to lead yeah. him, like, through this set of hints, like, to, you know, have a hint of how to get back uh, mm-hmm. or a clue of how to get back. And in <laughs> Greek, the word for ball of thread at the time was clue. No. Yes. That I love. Isn't that and cool? And that doesn't sound so made up. So a clue up. is, like, a Gre- the Greek, you know guy who didn't want to get lost so he unwound a clue and that to lead him back home but don't you wonder though how it kind of caught on i could see like that story being a thing that they say and there's got there's probably you know like any sort like there's some you know probably like he got a clue yeah and it's it there's probably some deep message inside of it that was something (laughs) like you know he wasn't good with directions so he unrolled the yarn as he went as like to teach the story that you know yes. if you're going to travel somewhere make sure you mark like where you're going something yeah give okay. yourself clues along the way it's like somehow like teaching a lesson in there right yeah okay i love that one yeah. that's and cute. so then when that's like the story that's of the times and people are all like you know talking about that or like sharing that story and then they're like oh you know an old clue you need a clue hey and i could see that catching on you know, I don't know if this is a true story, but I did hear a similar mythology about the word quiz. Mm, and mm-hmm. That was true? on the list. No. Tell me what you know. This was what this is what I remember, that there was some, this is probably wrong. No, Something I'm, I'm, about like they were supposed to make up a word and then they put it all over town like graffiti style. I don't know. Yeah, well, that- like you're very close to what I saw oh, okay. in here. So, okay, it was, tell me the truth. They were going to, they were trying to make up a word, and now I'm just trying to pull it up here because it's not one of the ones I chose to write down, but it's so <laughs> good anyway. Um, so, they were tr- trying to see if they could make up a word in like 72 hours and see if they could get yes. it like published and put into the dictionary. Yeah, like kind of make it go viral for make, that time. Yes, of that time. And so what yeah. they did is they invited a bunch of students in and they gave them a sheet of paper that just had the word quiz written on it. Okay. And they thought it was a, like a test that they were going to fail. And they got they were like, <laughs> what do we even do with this? And so they coined the term quiz is like this thing that you get and you you don't know like what to do test. like a test yeah that you have to like okay. figure out what you're gonna do with it but so like, there was no graffiti there was not any graffiti that i saw in I? this write-up of that's what it was said that they put it all over town so that people would start using the word and then i don't know but that's mm. funny okay that makes me think that's not a lie then let me see. If let me we see. Both... Quiz, quiz. Yep, yep. You think mine becomes then more true. It says, yeah. uh, Frank Throat Potter tells the origin story of quiz, <laughs> as legend has it. One Dublin based theater owner struck a wager that he could mint a word in the lexicon within 48 hours. Oh, 48. I gave him a little less time in my story. So he quickly distributed <laughs> a bunch of, piece of pa- pieces of paper that read simply quiz. Oh, so he distributed it. could have been all around okay. town. Who knows? Okay. People <laughs> right. couldn't figure out. Wow, I really filled in the blanks with like a lot of <laughs> my own like I imagination there. People couldn't figure it out. They thought it was a sort of test or quiz, if you will. And Uh then it goes on to say, though, however, it should be noted, and this is why I didn't even include it in here because I was like, oh, no, further research needs to be done. Uh, It says, (laughs) however, it should be noted that there's some dispute about the tale. Potter's story Mm. takes place in 1791, but in 1790, a popular toy named Quiz hit the market. (gasps) Dot, dot, dot. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, bum, bum. So... one yeah. thing we know is a word that should definitely exist is stamps. Stamps.com. Yes, this people. is the time for your stamps.com. Well, because you want to avoid membership. crowds and we're trying to stay home as much as we can, but sometimes you got to mail stuff. Suze, and so I didn't have time to use my stamps.com account and I, I just, there was some reason I couldn't use it. I was out of ink or something silly like that. And I had to, in a, in a pinch, go to the post office. The rates... For shipping something? Yeah. Way more expensive. Well, that's what's cool is Forget that. that. I'm not going back there. (laughs) Exactly. 
forget that. That's why I love it because usually they say like you got to pay for convenience, but this is like you get convenience and you get a price break because yeah, they cheaper. offer discounts. Yeah, you get discounts on priority packages and even like a regular old stamp that goes on an envelope and you just print it right there from your house, your desk, whatever, wherever you're at. And put it on the package and you can ship any class of mail to any destination, anytime, anywhere. And I just found out that they are now partnering with UPS. <gasps> so you, what? it'll do this cool thing where like you say what you need to have done, like what you need to ship. And it'll tell you, it's like a smart check to see if you're using the cheapest service for oh, your love this. particular... Well, yeah, I do too. And my mom is obsessed with UPS, so she will love that. Um, <laughs> right? She UPS. is. That's She's a funny thing to be a loyalist. Good. Okay. Right yeah. now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Brain Candy. That's Stamps.com. Enter Brain Candy. And stay safe, my friends. Stay safe and stay home. Yes. Anyway, okay, what else you got? What other yes, words? Yes, this one's a cute one. Uh, or cute is maybe not the word for what uh, this translates to, but we'll see. Uh, avocado is the Spanish word for aguacate, so there's okay. nothing awkward about that. But aguacate comes from the Aztec aquacatl, which has dual meanings, one avocado and two testicle. No. And doesn't an avocado look like a yes. testicle if you've ever seen one? I mean, that is like, of course, that should be the name of it. Is that why they called it that? Yeah. Because they look like balls. Well, it's, that's, if, if something like, it's kind of like orange is the color and it's a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> so the word aqua, uh, aquacado is avocado and also testicle. Wonder it's like which balls. Came first. Balls are balls and testicle. Like it's a right. bas- you know. Wow. Yeah. We so I do in, not know which came first. Are you telling me this is Spanish? Uh yes. Avocado is Spanish. So in in it in Mexico they refer to the fruit or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and the balls with but the same n- word. No, not in Mexico. This was in an Aztec language. If you translated oh, it in it's Aztec. Indigenous. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Do you do you just assume that testicle came first and then avocado or uh, oh yes <laughs> why what oh I don't well we have to know what the no that they that <laughs> if that was the name I don't know this is a I don't know yeah what's the causation direction here I <laughs> we don't know <laughs> we don't know oh uh, I love it though what if I they know, just happened it's so good. This one's good. Mortgage is a derivative of two French words, um, mort, which is death, and gage, or gauge, however you want to say that, which is pledge. So it's literally a death pledge. Why? That's what they call it. That's what it translates to in French. Why do you think that is? Because uh, isn't that what it feels like, maybe? <laughs> I have no idea. Yes. That This is all they gave me. There wasn't Remember more. Remember when... Remember when we talked about that supposedly the woman that was the oldest on uh, that ever lived and how she had made a deal because in France you can make a deal to like somebody agrees to sell you their house but they'll pay the mortgage or whatever until you die. I don't know this. Yeah. So like, okay. Oh my God. Um, I don't remember this. Tell me, tell me. So she got a deal where... She, somebody bought her house Mm -hmm. while she was still alive. They have a thing where you can buy it from an old person Uh and you take on their mortgage and then when they die, it's yours. Susie, this is the origin story. What? Oh. You just figured it out. Didn't you say that was in France? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's probably where it came from that, that. When they set up a system, I am totally making this up, but this is what I do. <laughs> this is the opposite of me being like, whatever. I don't even know the answer. Who cares? This is like, nope, this is definitely what it is. We know. Sarah's we know got it. theory all of a sudden again. Uh, so, <laughs> like, if maybe they came up with a system because they knew that, like, mortgage or that a house needed to be passed on. So they, they yeah. allowed somebody to pay for it. And then when you died, so you're almost like pledging to pay for it until the death of somebody. Yeah, it's kind of like a gamble. You're assuming they're this is old, exactly they're probably where that came die. from. Okay. This is a very incomplete article. 
<laughs> and we probably are making this up, but it she ended really up good, living though. like 30 more years. So he died before she did in the end. So he never got to move oh. in. Oh, but he's it, he for made it. Oh, it is like a gamble. Yeah, he made the worst deal ever because she was the longest living person of all time. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> I just pieced all the parts of the story yeah, together because yeah, yeah. I was like missing it. I was like caught up on the well, word mortgage. On here. There's a lot going on there. And there's a bird <laughs> chirping and I've got I'm ADD. Sorry. So, <laughs> Should I shut the door? Tell I me. mean, you don't have to. It's lovely. I'll it's t- kind I'll of like it. having a, a, a live audience. Okay, you entertain the people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I will start uh, giving them the little breakdown of the <laughs> term Luke in Luke in. Uh, oh my God. Now I'm just saying the same word over and over. Lukewarm. <laughs> Haven't you always wondered okay. that one? Yeah. Yeah. What is that one about? So the Luke in lukewarm is believed to be derivative of the Middle English word lu, uh, which means tepid. So really, you're just saying warm, warm. Oh. Yeah. Tepid, warm. What, what what temperature is that? Tepid warm. Warm warm. Okay. That's like a, such a boring right. word. Well, maybe... Would you consider tepid water to be warm water? I would consider it to be lukewarm water. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's such... <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But it's so funny that for some, that for some reason the word... All of that tepid and lukewarm sound boring and sound exactly like luke, lukewarm water. Yeah. Like yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. a thing. It's like not hot. It's not cold. I'm not excited about this. <laughs> That's so true. It's disappointing. I like how we're just mad about words. Now. Yeah. I'm like, ah, the freaking word. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I don't, I want to keep talking about this, but there, I have a feeling that my le- next list of things will also create some feelings of rage in you when I talk to you about things that are going to be obsolete in the next 20 years that like people believe are going to be obsolete. Woo. That's a good one. God, I'm already upset. Well, we'll transition to that with the word robot. Okay. So robot is less than a hundred years old. And I went to the Czech Republic for a challenge. Yeah. And we took a tour. We were like in a tour bus or something like that on the way to um, go I don't know what they were doing, taking us out for the day. And there was somebody who was telling us about the sites. They love to tell you that they invented the word robot in the Czech Republic. They tell <laughs> every single person to, like, in my experience of being there, you will That's... know that that is the word that, that was invented. I mean, I didn't even need this article to know that that wow. word came from there. But They I need did, to do what, something else. But what I didn't write, they did invent contact lenses. I know that as well. All right, that's from the tour. Good. Yes, um, yeah, I do retain a lot of those random facts. Okay, but this is not what I. But the origin is really about. It comes from a play that was written by this guy Carol Capek, and it's this Slovakish term "robota," meaning servitude. And in the play, he describes a mechanical worker who lacks nothing but a soul, uh, and who takes on the task that humans loathe. And Mm -hmm. that kind of creeps me out because like the word in its Mm -hmm. origin was like servitude to humans and Mm. creepy. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, let's go with that one. Oh my God. I don't know. It gives me kind of me out. I know that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know why knowing about this, this, the origin of that makes it seem even creepier that it's like destined for them to be like, Oh, you called us, ser- you thought we were yeah. your servants? Now, you know. Because remember when the scientists servant, programmed know. them to be able to talk to each other and it took like 20 minutes before they created their own language that the developers didn't understand? Because they didn't incentivize them to speak English. That was yeah. the best. They're like, oh yeah, we can just make up whatever. We, we made them, oh, ah, that freaks me out. See, we're doomed. Oh my God. I'm going to need a lot more of that pot. Uh, just to oh, survive yeah. in this world. Yeah, I certainly hope that is not something that becomes obsolete in the future. <laughs> yes. Oh, but I have a long list of things that will. And some of these okay. I argue with because I'm like, mm, I need that to not go anywhere. Well, and definitely won't be obsolete is ritual vitamins. That just gets more important because like, I don't know, if farming <laughs> disappears, we're right. definitely going to need vitamins for our nutrients. <laughs> Right. And so this is like the good side of science, not the scary robot kind, because they decided they wanted to make vitamins that had the nutrients that you need 
and that you want to be getting from your diet, but you know, sometimes we're missing the mark there. So they created this vitamin that I always rave about because it tastes like mint and smells like mint because the other ones smell like garbage. And when you take it, it does not make make you sick because usually it can make you nauseous and it's a big deal. And these are time release. So they're very gentle on your tummy and um, they use high quality ingredients and it's all transparent. You can find out wherever what's in there and where they got it. Daily changes can lead to big results. So start small today. Ritual's offering our listeners 10% off your first three months. Try it out. Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to ritual.com slash brain candy to start your ritual today. That's 10% off during the first three months at ritual.com slash brain candy. Yes. Super important. All right. Let's hear it. So I was thinking about like the things that how, you know, in our last episode, we were talking about kind of returning to an mm-hmm. old, a, a more yes, simplified more future. Basic. Yeah. So like, and this of course is just an article that's talking to like those futurists, like the people whose job it is to kind of plan and predict the future mm-hmm. because like there actually are those jobs. So I understand that their job is to like conceptualize things way out in advance and maybe they don't, uh, uh, consider like the pendulum swinging into the other, in the other direction because some of these after that conversation I like look at and I'm like Ugh, you know I don't know and so I'll like even though this is like down the list I'll kick it off with the one that made me kind of like push back the hardest and that okay. was landlines oh and and you pushed back on it yeah I'm thinking that when I actually like own a home I will have I want a landline I want one that also attaches to the wall Oh, okay. So you don't, you think this is probably true, but you don't like it. Oh, that might be it. I didn't even consider that. I was just like, I think that there are positives to this that we're not even considering. Like, okay, tell me. I think having a landline in the house when there are children. Yeah. And it's, it's like attached to the wall. I want to like hear their conversations and know like what's going on. And like, you call the house phone and also, this was hilarious. I, like, was cracking up because I was talking to Ren about this. And, uh, you know, he's always like, oh, can you do me a favor? Can you, like, keep your phone on you? And he was <laughs> like, what? You know, okay, I will. And he's like, yeah, because uh, I need you to help me carry in groceries. And I tried to call, like, two times last time, and you oh. were not going to – you did not answer. And I'm just about to remove you as my emergency contact because <laughs> – and I thought that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. And I was like, that made me actually want to change my habits because I was Aww. like, oh my God, I'm not responsible enough with a phone and like selfish with it in a way where I'm like, unless I want to be, you know, reached, like, don't call me. But like, yeah. what if there's an emergency? So I feel like having a landline is like perfect for people like me who maybe don't have their phone with them all the time or like I'm in session a lot and I keep it on silent. Yeah. This has now turned into me just arguing why I, I don't answer, like no, giving I get me an excuse it. for why I don't answer well, the phone. But and uh, as you, I think it'd be as good. As you know, our house is in a dead zone. So right? if our Wi-Fi is out, our phones are useless and right. so we just got a landline for that reason okay. that you're saying. Where there we go. In, this, in what advertisers keep referring to as these uncertain times, um, <laughs> it felt important to have a, a more um, reliable way to call or be reached yeah. during crazy it's, times. It's really funny that you talk about the advertisers saying that because <laughs> I don't have like regular cable or you know television like that. Yeah. And so I hadn't seen commercials <laughs> and I don't know, we, we were watching something, maybe we were like live streaming something, but I, I caught like a couple of commercials and it is <laughs> weird. They are weird now. That's commercials make you feel bad. Don't watch those. Mm-hmm. Just and listen they, to us, And also man. like, I just hate how they act like they're in it t- together with right. us. <laughs> like you don't have to pretend. I'm like, we're I need vitamins, but I don't need a car right now. <laughs> well, yeah, and like a lot of those ads, it just feels like, and I know a lot of people notice when you watch reruns and stuff, when people touch now, it seems so <gasps> weird. Oh my God, I'm so glad you said that because every time I see somebody doing something like that or even like yeah. in a group, 
in a group of people. I'm like, oh my God, they're all at a restaurant. Oh, right. Because they don't live in these uncertain times. Yeah, <laughs> these uncertain times. That is so, I'm so glad you said that because I was like, is this a weird thing that's, that my mind, what no. is my mind doing? It's trying to like normalize this and it's, it's expanding well, we get my these experience and reality to, onto or projecting like my experience onto the, the characters on the TV. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, it just feels like a different time. And, you know, if this does sort of reset us and that we d- don't exhibit those behaviors anymore, like shaking hands, et cetera, mm-hmm. people will look back at those old shows and be like, well, no wonder you people were all sick. You couldn't keep your hands off each other. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that, I mean, I want to get keep sharing these ones with you, but I found uh, another article that was a theory, like a scientific research study that was done on why people touch their face. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's hear that. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just skip to that. Whatever. You can do either one. Whatever. We can go, we can, we can skip around. Let's, let's freaking talk about touching your face and why you shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. So there uh, was a research study that was done at the Institute of Science in Israel and they were want they wanted to know um, if there was a link between touching our face and the human tendency to smell ourselves. So okay. there is a very human tendency to smell ourselves. And to kick off, like to start their investigation, they did an online survey for, of more than four hundred people from nineteen different countries, and they asked them about their sniffing habits. So mm-hmm. around ninety, would you say first of all that you're somebody who would who has smelt your own hands or armpits or you know oh yeah you know put your hand like smell your crotch like whatevs like uh, sure. Ali Wong has the hilarious joke that she's like yeah that's like nature's test like. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's all good. You do that right. and then you're good. And you're like, things are good. So she's yeah. hilarious about it. And it said yeah. that um, 91 to 94% reported smelling their own hands and armpits uh, respectively. And 55% said that they've smelled their hand after placing it in their armpit. While 73, <sighs> I do that all the freaking time. Mine, definitely. Uh, and while 73% <laughs> of men and 55% of women said that they have smelled their hand after placing it near their crotch. I think that number's higher and women are ashamed to say it. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, I feel like that's like, you know, nature's test. You got to like check, check. Yeah, Um, because if you can't tolerate it, then you're in real trouble. Right. And you got to make sure everything's all like good good to go down there. Ship shape. Ship shape. Um, It also (laughs) said that up to 94% of people reported sniffing their romantic partner and 60% said Mm -hmm. that they sniff strangers. And not like sniff, like you're coming up and you're like, but like you walk by and you like catch a sniff of them and like we've smelt them. And I definitely smell Ren all the time, like a crazy person. I grab him and I'm like, ah, like it's so weird. Yeah, you're musk. Yes. So they also looked at video footage of people who were watching a lecture and they noticed that a ton of people were touching their hands and there was like a lot of hand to nose contact and it was an unmistakable action of sniffing and okay it concluded that a lot of our social sniffing is like subconscious and we mm-hmm. do this thing where we like are kind of using this like that they they wanted to see if if in our interactions with people volatile organic compounds or VOCs like the things that hold scent could be passed mm-hmm. from something like a handshake or something like, you know, interacting yeah. with a person. And in fact, they do. So when we interact with people or shake hands or something like that, we get like their scent on them. And then yeah. it's almost like this biological test that we do from way back when to kind of smell our hands or put our hands near our face or touch our hands. And so they saw that after interacting with somebody new, and I let me see what the percentage is. I don't, I can't find i don't know where it says like the percentage of how much increased but um researchers showed that when you met somebody new your likelihood of touching your face went way up really because like you subconsciously are like let me smell them let me see right but kind of like dogs do they're like i would love to know if it informs our opinion of that person unknowingly too i think it does right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I so think you it should really smell does. good, but it, maybe it doesn't matter. It, right. It says like to test this idea, they 
uh, showed that handshaking was enough to transfer smell-giving particles, known as VOCs, from one hand to another. They next uh, got human participants to shake hands with researchers, then convert, uh, covertly recorded and quantified hand-to-nose contact before and after handshaking, observing that the rate of self-sniffing significantly increased after handshaking. Oh. Yeah. It sounds gross, but it's interesting to know why we do it. Yeah, so that's it. It's like this biological, like, I need to make sure the people around me are, are I don't know. It's almost right. like, like, like you smell okay? Like It really is like dogs. There? You're right. Yeah. So that's why you can't stop touching your face. It's, bi- it's biology. And oh my gosh, that, and don't you feel like, oh my God, I'm doing it right now. I feel like when I'm like on autopilot yeah. and not as mindful... I touch my face way more, which is but kind like, of like when you're in that like default. I don't know. Whenever you watch like an Instagram live or something and someone's just at their house talking, but you see all the comments are like, stop touching your face. And I oh just wonder God. why they're saying that though, because presumably if you're at home and you have clean hands, isn't it fine to touch your face then? Yeah. I agree with that. I think yes. Uh, my aunt did the same thing to me. I like, you know, she, we weren't even, I, I think we were on Zoom. Oh yeah, we were on Zoom together. She wasn't even in the same building as me. And I was like talking to her. Oh my God, she's going to be like, I'm sorry. She's going to hear this because she listens. <laughs> well, Hi, I Peggy. think it's very common. I don't yes. think it's just your aunt. I mean, it's, a, it's everybody. a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I'm at my own house. There's certain, I'm not going to, I got to scratch my eye. I got a scratch in my, she's like, you're touching your eyes. I'm like, well, I can't not. And this is my own house. And Right, you know, like there's no way to like, not touch yourself ever. Yeah, I'm, I you mean, you should just have clean hands and do it. Yeah, this is stop right. policing everyone. I don't like it. Yeah, well, not Peggy. Peggy can do whatever. I'm talking right. about like on the instant yeah. lives and stuff. I did see another article that I just like skimmed over, uh, uh, but it was one of those ones where it's like, yeah, kind of duh. Um, that was on the the personality traits or the the traits of psychopathology mm-hmm. in people who are haters online not Tell trolls me. because that's different that's what this right. article was arguing is that trolls are and bullies they're like yeah. three different categories like trolls bullies and haters mm-hmm. and they were looking to see what are the personality traits and what are the the um traits of they did this right after the olympics and they looked at people commenting on the olympians and then they took the people who commented and they tested their um levels of psychopathology and a bunch of other different things and um like empathy and stuff like that and they found that they were all high in um they all ranked high like in the psychopath traits but not in narcissism or the one where it's like violent like machiavellianism so they don't feel said. great about themselves, but they're also assholes. Yeah, they're really just <laughs> doing it to like be dicks. They just want you to feel bad. Yeah, and I think that that's oh. one of those either misery loves company things. Like mm-hmm. I feel like this, so I want you to feel this way. Yes. So I think that we not so. And I, how I'm connecting all this is thinking about why people are are like. Stop touching your face and, and like policing of behavior yeah. is that when we're in, when we feel more stress, the yes. likelihood of us reacting in those ways goes up. Cause I've it all ties it, together, I think. I, yeah, because I've noticed that policing of behavior so high lately because yep. um, everything everyone does, they, they are mad about it. Just like people were weird when we had masks on. <sighs> Susie. And deciding. I, I, yes. What were you going to say? No, I'm I'm just totally agreeing with you on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I even notice it in myself, but I Same. realize it and don't say it. You just oh my think gosh, it. I realize it, I say it, and then afterwards I have to talk about it <laughs> because that is so you. Uh, I'm like I know what I did, and I I <laughs> told Ren it was like a silly thing. It was so silly, and then afterwards I was like, this is ridiculous for me to even what say this. Was it? So like. For me, going to the grocery store is like the only thing that I have, you know, and I like spend all week yeah. like prepping and planning. And this time, <laughs> Ren was going to go to the grocery store and I was like, we're going to make a list and it's going to be great. And he woke up early and he's like, oh, I'll just take care of it myself. And he went to the grocery store and he came back home and I woke up and I was like, where is he? And he came back home and I'm like, oh, he went to the grocery store. 
I want like I, I didn't even make a list. I don't even know what we're getting. Oh my gosh, did you get cereal? You know, and it was like went into <laughs> panic mode because it wasn't I wasn't in control. That's yes. it. And like I have no control over anything. So I had the expectation in my mind that I was gonna somehow be able to control the groceries. And that's a silly thing to Aww. put all my expectations into. And then when it didn't, he it, this is so dumb. He got like spreadable butter. And I was like, don't, I don't want you to cook any of my food with this. Like I made like a scene, like not really a scene, <laughs> a but scene. I was just like, this isn't what I want. And I, cause I just, yeah. I couldn't fi- I just needed to pour that. And then afterwards I was like, that is so dumb. You can cook with that, whatever. And I, that was clearly, that was, that was really a control thing and that he's so understanding of my craziness. Yeah, we all have those moments. But Don't, I just like yeah, really yeah. knew what it was then. And then I was like, I'm sorry. I just wanted to go to the grocery store or like, or wanted to make a list for the grocery store. It's so silly, but he's so wonderful and like taking, do, taking care of that. And I like, don't see that. But anyways, I digress. Yeah, there, there is much more of it now. People are all feeling stressed and I get it, but you're self-aware. I think I'm self-aware and so we can control it to a certain extent. But mm-hmm. I noticed that a lot of people maybe aren't as self-aware and lash out and don't realize it's like mm-hmm. kind of more about their own shit. Yeah. I mean, that's always that's what I always say. You got to zoom out. You got to look at everything going on. You got to give a little compassion. Yeah, go ahead and look in the mirror, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or that. I try to be a little gentler. <laughs> That's why I'm not a therapist. That's why you're not a therapist. You Maybe might make a good look life in the mirror. coach, though. <laughs> That's funny. Right? I want to uh, know some more of those um, things that will be obsolete, too. Ooh, this is one I'm mad about because I love it, and I feel like doctors are like, hmm, no, we're, okay. we don't care. Uh, <laughs> cursive. <gasps> I am mad. I know, Right? Yeah, so it says that cursive has a f- has few practical applications in our modern I mean, world, mostly true. because we text what we read and we rarely interact with cursive at all. And I th- also I I think that as things become more, it doesn't say this in here, but I'm just like making this assumption that it's harder to, for computers to like read font writing. You yes. know, there's it's not as standardized as Good point. You know, and you don't see the start and stop with the letters. Yeah. And so I feel like on things like checks or on things like, you know, whatever it is. that that Or even when um, I had a tablet when I was in school and I did my notes with like a pen that would, it would like translate what you write into text. Yeah. And I had to quit using that and I just would write cursive on a, you know, on like a, do it just like cursive writing because the computer never was able to read what I was writing in cursive. Yeah. And that's how I write fast. How do you take notes fast? Not in Totally. I can't take no And uh, you can't take notes well on a computer. Mm-hmm. That That's a fact that you take notes better without a computer. I agree. Yes. And, and I had professors who didn't allow computers for taking notes. You weren't even allowed to have a laptop in there. You had to just... That's what I would do. Print it out. That of course is what I would do. I'd be so strict. Mm-hmm. They're lucky People they're not getting it. chore charts if I were their teacher. <laughs> this is chore charts. Well, oh. and I noticed like Lincoln's in second grade, so he is too young for cursive, I guess. But mm-hmm. he, if I write in cursive, he acts like it's in Mandarin. <laughs> like he cannot. Oh, just gives it back to any. you. Like I, 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 I don't know what to do with this. He's like, I can't read this, and it didn't occur to me that that's a skill that you have to learn how wow. to read. That like particular kind of writing. Those funky ass G's. They don't look anything like. <laughs> it seems like it would be intuitive, but not for Lincoln Butler. Right. That is one that, that it, there are some people that argue that it helps, but then I'm going to have people who are like, no, this is like the light thing again, which I swear to God did some <laughs> must so- work. Um, but the people said that it helps mm-hmm. with dyslexia and enhances reading and spelling abilities. Cursive? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, it huh. really would teach you how to go from left to right because you connect everything. Well, that's true. Yeah. Interesting. I hope it doesn't go away, though. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It'll just stay in, in wedding invitations. Calligraphy, right? Yeah, it'll be calligraphy and like that's <laughs> it. All right. Let me see. What are some of the other ones that I'm mad about? Like some of them are like obvious, like the iPod. Yeah, you don't need that. It's all on your phone. Yeah. 
and everything like that. Buttons on phones, that's done. This okay. one, I I argue this one is is necessary. <laughs> Alarm clocks. Yeah, I would not think that's obsolete. Are because they just naming everything you can do on your phone? It feels like that a little bit. We're sick of it. Yeah, and I think that, like, it says, like, people are use sixty percent of young people use their phone as their primary timepiece, and yeah, all right. Then it goes on to argue, and if you read, uh, if you are a book club uh, member and you read the book on sleep or on 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 sunlight, chasing, uh, what was it called, chasing the sun? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that it damages the quality of your sleep. So I feel like a classic old school alarm clock yeah, is not that. only cool, but like like you said, kind of like being, what happens when the phone doesn't work? Yeah, for real. I like I, old I, reliable. And you know how they say not to keep your phone charging near your bed um, as Why you were saying so. It's like... Oh, because well, it lights up. Well, it's like up. the urge to go on and go <sighs> on it in the night if you wake up or, yeah, it lights For up. Sure. Or it, oh, I never even thought about that. They say, like, you should charge it in a completely separate room and because it's so disruptive. And so then you should have an alarm clock. Although I have never used an alarm clock in my life. I've, I just wake up when it's <sighs> yeah, time. Yeah, that is really amazing that you can that your body so does that. I am so glad. You just have one of those. Like, when I took the 23andMe uh, test... It'll tell you what time your body most likely wakes up. And no. mine said 9 a.m. Is that right? Y- yes, which is why it's really hard for me to get go. Like, you know, yeah. I can't, waking up naturally at 7 a.m. feels like, oh, God, that's early. And you just naturally get up. But then yeah. I can't go to bed till like 1 a.m. So it's all, it's all designed that way, though. That's like, you know, everybody's got a different. That was another thing that they were covering in that body book when it was talking about sleep was how, you know, when I said you don't roll off the bed, so so you know that you have this conscious awareness of the outside world, even when you're in your internal um, life. And that that is also why you're able to just kind of know when to wake up if you have some reason you need to wake up in the morning. And I just yes. think that's so miraculous and cool. It is that you just, you do know, like when it's important, I, I almost, and everybody's done this. You wake up two minutes before the alarm clock goes off. <laughs> right. Why is that? Oh my that's God. so cool. Your body knows what's cooking. Even yes. when you don't. When I was at summer camp and you're going to roll your eyes at this, I know it, but we have like those rat, the rag ceremony, you know, where we like set goals for ourselves, and you know, you get like a different rag every time you like achieve your personal goal. <laughs> and for the gold rag, it's a sunlight, like sunrise little ceremony for it. And so you like do it first thing, like crack a dawn right as soon as the mm-hmm. sun's coming up and it's really beautiful. Um, but you're at camp and they don't have cell phones and you're in the dead zone anyway because you're in the middle, middle of the woods. You don't have an alarm clock. So what everybody you know would always say to do and what I did too is they said use the old Native American trick where you – well, at least that's what they told me it's from. Uh, you drink a whole bunch of water before you go to bed. Yeah. And then your body naturally wakes up because you got to pee and then wow. you'll be awake when the sun comes up. And I mean, you can it probably perfectly is time it with how much water you drink to when you want to wake up. Come on. Well, I mean, I can't. I only tried it once, but you keep doing that. You know how much you would need <laughs> well, that's to true. like wake yeah. up at certain times. And sure enough, it totally worked. And I was like, oh, I got to go. And also, hey, there's, there's the sun peeking up. So, Well, I, I, bet you the, I bet you your listicle was kind of written, you know, before everything that's going on recently. Because now I feel like we are going yes. back to a lot of this people is are going to get really roosters. Good point. Let me find <laughs> they're going to get roosters. For yeah. sure, Suze, I've already said, oh yeah, this was written at la- last year. Yeah. Almost a full year ago. Um yeah, I told that to Ren. I've said that to Ren like a million times. I'm like, we're eventually going to live somewhere where I can have some bees and we can have some chickens. Where would you think that is though? Cuz I keep feeling like that's not in California. Yeah, but- it probably won't be in California. I mean, his family lives in Texas, so there's definitely mm-hmm. space there. Yeah, because I mean, we you have so much time to think now, and you really are. I think everyone's reflecting on like what their What's life important. will look like. Yeah. yeah, and so I think there's a lot of people thinking like maybe city living is not great, right? Um, because of the density of the population and germs and well, all that of was that. that I read a uh, this is a completely different article, but another thing that was talking about how the world will change in you know afterwards. Yeah. And it said that uh, 
a lot of jobs will or like people who commute into the city who work for companies that where they could do like uh uh on like be online and they mm-hmm. can work from home that everybody will leave the cities I, they said it much simpler and pretty prettier than that but basically that like cities would people would leave the city and they'd go out further away because you don't have to commute and you don't have to drive into the city yeah work from home yeah, I think there these times they are a change in and a lot of things like that are going to shift. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that's a good thing. I for sure, I think it's great. I think it does change. It's exactly like the article you wrote. Changes the things that you value, changes what becomes important. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I realize thing- having some outdoor space is important to me. Yes, that is a good point. We're seeing like what we don't like about our situations, what we do like. Yep. So we can take stock. Mm-hmm. And everyone ought to be subscribing to us and leaving five star views. Yes. Check out our oh my Patreon. God, we're if done you want already? Some- <laughs> we're done. Ah! All right. It was so fun, though. It was. I miss you guys. Until next time, you can just leave See us a five star review. Time. Tell a friend to join us on Patreon. I love you. Bye. Bye.